What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be doing a 3D scene and compositing walkthrough of this airplane runway shot that we have populated with runners in our Horde add-on for Blender trailer. This video is not really a tutorial, but will hopefully give you some ideas on how you can implement some of these techniques in your own visual effects projects. This video is a special request by Paul DeVecchio, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Anyways guys, here we are inside of Blender. The first thing that we did for this shot was motion track our footage and it was a pretty simple track. You can see we have a pretty good solve error here of 0.32 pixels, so pretty stable track. You can see that our tracking points are sticking on our footage nicely. So we've just tracked our footage here and then added that 3D tracking data to a 3D camera into our scene. And in our layout mode, we've just added a basic ground plane to recreate the geometry of our runway. As you can see, the shot is just looking out of a window of an airplane. So I've just recreated that basic geometry of the runway. Nothing too fancy. I didn't even model out any barriers or anything since I knew our characters were just going to be running along the ground here. So I've modeled out a basic ground plane here. And then I've also, in our physics properties, I've made it a collision object so our character character void systems that we're adding with our horde add-on would interact with this object and would be able to run along it. So after recreating the general geometry of our scene, I've also added a basic material to our ground plane. I just made the ground plane the basic color of our runway here. So just a tan color, no camera projection here. Sometimes, as you guys know, I'll project the image of our environment onto the ground plane. But in this case, I just went with a basic solid color here. And then I've just added to light our characters that we've added to the environment. I've just added a basic HDRI. And in addition to our HDRI in the world settings, I've added a area light here above our characters as well, just to recreate the hard sunlight beating down on the runway. All right, so after recreating the general geometry of our scene, it was time to, of course, add our crowd systems with the Horde add-on. And in this specific shot, rather than using our geometry node systems, I've actually used the Boyd systems inside of our Horde add-on. So we're actually using our Humans Professional Collection here, and we're using the runners for all of our systems. And then we're actually, rather than using the geometry nodes, as I mentioned, we're using the Boyd system. Now, most of the time, I prefer using the geometry node system, as it's going to give you much more control over the final result and spread of your character and how fast they're running and really give you much more refined control with this setup. However, we did add the Boyd system to Horde, so I thought it was nice to implement this in one of the simpler shots in the trailer for the add-on. So as you can see here, I've added five different Boyd particle emitters at various parts in our scene, and by adjusting the size of our emission planes, we're actually getting different spreads of characters. And then I made all of these Boyd systems that our characters are attached to follow a singular empty that's kind of where the air plan would be in our scene. So you can see here all of our characters are facing and running toward the same general direction as we go further back here. So it's not total chaos for our characters and you can see if we play through our scene they're all just running toward the same general direction. And you can see, actually, this is a good example of why I don't always use Boyd's, and I would rather use our geometry node systems inside of Horde. But you can see we're getting a little glitch here with one of our Boyd particles bouncing, which is not what we want. So sometimes you'll get things like that, and you'll have to experiment with it in order to get rid of it. Or in this specific case, what I've done to deal with this glitch is I've literally just framed out that particle so we don't have to deal with it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's essentially what we did to create our crowd systems running at the runway here. I've rendered out multiple view layers of the different elements. So I wanted to render out a view layer with just our background characters and then our closer characters here on this specific system, I've rendered out on a separate view layer so that we could composite those separately. As far as our view layer properties, I've exported just a combined beauty pass of our characters as well as a mist pass so we could composite some of the deeper characters in our scene with a little bit more atmospheric fall off. I've also exported an ambient occlusion pass as well in case we wanted to deepen the shadows of our characters a bit as well. But anyways, that was our scene setup inside of Blender. I've exported the render as a multi-layer OpenEXR sequence so that we could access all of the passes in a single file. Now, usually when I create something in Blender, I'll composite it inside of Blender as well. However, in this specific case, I've actually used Fusion to composite our elements together. So let's get into our node compositing process and I'll show you guys what we've done here. 
All right guys, so here we are inside of Blackmagic Fusion and this is our final composite. You can see that our characters are nicely composited into the shot. I've added some dust here in the foreground and uh, you know, distorted them along the window here as the window has been distorted. And if we bring this up here, you'll be able to see our node tree setup. And this is actually a very simple setup. If you're not familiar with node-based compositing, pretty much how this works is you start off with your, you know, your live action footage here. And then each one of these merge nodes is like you're overlaying another element on top of your original footage. So you're just overlaying the data of your different elements on top of each other until you reach your final result. So I'll just go through this node compositing setup here and show you guys what we've done to composite our characters into our shot. So the first thing we have here on Media N3 is our live action shot. So just our airplane taxiing along the runway. The first thing that we've overlaid on top of our shot is our background character shadow. So I've taken our background character shadow. I've run it through a color curves to make the shadows a little bit darker. I've defocused them a bit since they were a bit sharp in our render. And then finally I've merged them on top of our footage. And I don't know if you can see that here. Let me just zoom in to 100%. So this is just our character shadows. So you can see before our character shadows and then after. So just adding our character shadows, our sun is coming from directly above, so pretty accurate result. And then one thing that was crucial for this composite was actually distorting the parts of the elements in a way that matched how the window in this shot was distorting the live action footage. So you can see here, our window is actually distorting the background in our live action footage. So we wanted to way to actually create that same distortion on our elements. So what we've done is we've added a defocus node as well as a grid warp to warp our elements in a way that was similar to how the window was distorting our deep background in the live action shot. And in order to make sure that this grid warp only occurred right where the seam of our window is, we actually just created a mask here with this polygon. And you can see if we just zoom out a bit, just created this very basic mask. And by creating this mask and applying it to our defocus and grid warp node, we're telling these two nodes to only apply that effect on the element, in this case, our background character shadow, where that mask is being placed. So we're not actually defocusing the entire element, but only where this mask is. So I've done these defocusing and grid warp effects across all of our other elements as well. So I think it'll become apparent as we continue along this breakdown. So we've used a merge node to merge our background character shadow onto our footage. And then our next layer that we've comped onto our footage is of course our background characters. So you can see here, here we have our background characters by themselves. Then I've color corrected them a bit, lifted up their shadows. Now it looks like our shadow shadows are a little bit too lifted here, but once they're composited in and uh, we have all of our other effects, it actually blends in nicely. Then I've defocused them a bit since they were a bit too sharp. And finally, like I mentioned before, we're using these two defocus and this grid warp node to warp the background characters if they cross by our window seam here. And again, we're using that same polygon mask to do that. Now you can see what our characters look like comped on to our scene. And you can see here how our characters are actually being distorted with the window here based on our polygon mask. You can see our mask here is just kind of feathers so that only our grid warp is applied to the white areas. So it just kind of fades off just like our live action window. And then we're of course using that grid warp effect as well to bend our character data. So you can see what this grid warp node is doing. If I just remove our uh, mask from it, we can actually distort our characters like so. But of course we're only distorting our characters where that window seam actually is. So I'll go ahead and undo that effect. But this uh, grid warp tool is a great way you can distort your CG elements and replicate some distortion that might be happening in a live action shot in a way that makes a lot more sense so you can blend that CG into the live action a bit better. So finally, we've merged our background characters on top of our live action shot here. And then the next CG element that we've merged in is our foreground characters. So you can see our foreground character shadow is pretty subtle here. You can actually barely see it. Uh, let me just go before and after here so you can see a bit better. So here's without and then with you can see our foreground character shadows just right there. We only have one character showing up right now, so that's why it's only one shadow. And I've just color corrected it a little bit, made the shadows a bit deeper, and then I've added a little bit of defocus to it as well so it wasn't too sharp. And then our next layer that we've added is actually our mist overlay for our background characters. So you can see here if I enable this, 
you see we have that nice mispass data that we can use to comp in the elements as they go further into the background. We have more atmospheric fall off. So that's why we've exported that render data. So I got this data, I've multiplied it to isolate it by itself. And we're using this data to lift our shadows as our characters are further in the background. So it's kind of a procedural way of adding that atmospheric fall off. Then I've added a little bit of color correction to it. And it might seem like a lot here, but uh, I'm just adding a lot of red to our mist pass because our actual footage is actually pretty red as well. Uh, you can see our runway is kind of this reddish color. So I've just added that to the mist pass so that our fall off on the characters would be of a similar color. So actually right now, without all the other elements that we've added past this point, our shadows are a little bit maybe too lifted for our background characters. But once we add everything else in it looked okay so yeah that was our next pass then after adding our mist i've then added our foreground characters which is in this specific frame just one of our characters here so not really necessary to comp it in by itself i probably could have just rendered all of our characters on one view layer but it turned out okay so you can see that i've lifted the shadows a bit so you can see here's our character I've lifted the shadows a bit to match the black levels. Then I've uh, decreased the contrast, add a little bit of defocus. Um, it looks really defocused here because we're so zoomed in, but if we bring it out to fit, you can see how big this character actually is in the scene. Or maybe you can't, it's so small. We're just defocusing to match our background, essentially. And then finally, we've added that lens distortion and then merged it on top of our footage. And looking up close on these characters, it's not perfect. So sometimes when you're compositing your elements, you find out that you know once you've rendered them out, you need to adjust a lot of things. And one trick you can do if uh, you don't like the way your rendered elements are looking is you can overlay some elements in between them and the camera. So the next thing that I've done to do that, in addition to just creating a more immersive shot, I just added some dust elements. Um, kind of passing by the camera here. I just have some footage here of dust passing the camera from right to left and it doesn't want to play back really well right now. I'm on my old MacBook so I'm gonna just leave it as a still frame from now but this footage is passing from right to left as if the plane is moving and there's you know some dust passing by the camera. And then I've used a another mask here to act as you know that window seam so that the dust would only show up on the composite outside of the window. And then you know I've color corrected the dust a little bit, decreased the contrast a bit, lifted the shadows, and then finally I've used this merge node to comp it onto our footage. So here you can see with the dust and then before without the dust. And uh, yeah, I thought that blended our shot in nicely. Also for this merge node, I'm using the screen blend mode so that our dust is not quite as uh, prevalent. So I've just taken that piece of stock footage and I've just dialed it back so it's very subtly just passing by the camera from right to left outside the window here. And yeah, essentially that's it for this shot. I've added a little bit of foam grain with this film grain node. You can kind of see it there if we zoom in. You can see that we've had a little bit of film grain to it. it. Might be a little too much depending on your taste, but I decided to go for it on this one. And then I've added a little bit of color curves, deepening the shadows a bit so that we have a little bit more punch there. And yeah, that was our final shot. When you get down to it, pretty simple compositing tree. When you break it all down, it looks really complex when you're not familiar with node compositing, but it's actually a pretty simple composite. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects content, and I'll see you next time.